The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over it, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through it, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In it, your son, Jesus, received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us through his death and resurrection from the bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Now sanctify this water, we pray you, by the power of your Holy Spirit, that those who here are cleansed from sin and born again may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior. To him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory now and forever. Amen.
whole church said amen. 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 <laughs> Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That a special convention of the church in the Diocese of Michigan, duly called in accordance with the constitution and canons of the said diocese, and assembled in the Cathedral Church of St. Paul, Detroit, Michigan, on June 1st, 2019, the Reverend Dr. Bonnie A. Perry, being at least 30 years of age, was <laughs> was duly elected by a constitutional majority consistent with the Constitution and canons of the Diocese of Michigan, and that all requirements of the Constitution of the Episcopal Church have been complied with. In witness whereof, we, the Right Reverend Wendell N. Gibbs, Jr., President of the said convention, and the Reverend Dr. W. Richard Hamlin, Secretary thereof, have caused to set our hand and cause the seal of the diocese to be affixed this first day of June, 2019. Canonical Testimonial of Election. Diocese of Michigan, Testimonial of Election of a Bishop Diocesan. We, whose names are hereunder written, fully sensible of how important it is that the sacred order and office of a bishop should not be unworthily conferred, and firmly persuaded that it is our duty to bear testimony on this solemn occasion without partiality, do, in the presence of Almighty God, testify that we know of no impediment on account of which the Reverend Dr. Bonnie A. Perry ought not to be ordained to that holy office. We do, moreover, jointly and severally declare that we believe the Reverend Dr. Bonnie A. Perry to have been duly and lawfully elected and to be of such sufficiency in learning, of such soundness in the faith, and of such godly character as to be able to exercise the office of a bishop to the honor of God and the edifying of the church and to be a wholesome example to the flock of Christ. Signed June 1, 2019, a. F. Putalis, President of the Standing Committee. I hereby certify that the above canonical testimonial was signed by a constitutional majority of the Convention of the Diocese of Michigan, meeting in special session at the Cathedral Church of St. Paul, Detroit, Michigan, the first day of June, 2019. Signed, W. Richard Hamlin, Secretary of Convention. June 3, 2019, Certificate of Ordination. This is to certify that, according to the Recorder of Ordinations, Bonnie Ann Perry was ordained to the diaconate on June 2, 1990, by Bishop John Shelby Spong at St. Paul's Episcopal Church in Patterson, New Jersey, and to the priesthood on December 15, 1990 by Bishop John Shelby Spong at Christ Episcopal Church in Ridgewood, New Jersey, the Church Pension Fund in its capacity as Recorder of Ordinations, signed Felicia Diaz. Certificate of Consents of Standing Committees. I hereby certify that consents have been received from the standing committees of 60 dioceses to the ordination and consecration of the Reverend Dr. Bonnie A. Perry to be Bishop Diocesan of the Diocese of Michigan. Signed, Anne F. Butalis, President of the Standing Committee, Diocese of Michigan, dated July 17, 2019.
Be it known by all the people of God that 65 bishops, being a majority of the bishops having jurisdiction in this church, have consented to the ordination and consecration of Bonnie Ann Perry as a bishop in the Church of God and to her status in the House of Bishops as Bishop of Michigan, being 1,127th Bishop in the American Succession. Signed, Diane M. Jardine Bruce, Secretary, House of Bishops. My sister, please make your declaration. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, I, Bonnie Ann Perry, chosen bishop of the church in Michigan, solemnly declare that I believe estimates to be the word of God is necessary for salvation. And I do solemnly engage to conform to the doctrine and the discipline and the worship of the Episcopal Church. Brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus, you have heard testimony given that Bonnie Ann Perry has been duly and lawfully elected to be a bishop of the Church of God to serve in the Episcopal Diocese of Michigan. You have been assured of her suitability and that the Church has approved her for this. Nevertheless, if any of you know any reason why we should not proceed, let it now be made known. Is it your will? that we ordain Bonnie a bishop. That is our will. Will you uphold Bonnie as bishop? We will. The Holy Scriptures tell us that our Savior Christ spent the whole night in prayer before he chose and sent forth his 12 apostles. Likewise, the apostles prayed before they appointed Messiah, Matthias to be one of their number. Let us therefore follow their examples and offer our prayers to Almighty God before we ordain Bonnie for the work to which we trust the Holy Spirit has called her. Holy God, in whom all things in heaven and earth have their being. Jesus Christ, through whom the world is reconciled to the Father. Have mercy on us. Holy Spirit, whose glory fills the world and searches the depths of God. Have mercy on us. Blessed Trinity, Source of both unity and diversity, have mercy on us. From blind hearts and petty spirits that refuse to see the need of all humankind for your love, spare us, good Lord. 
from pride, self-sufficiency, and the unwillingness to admit our own need of your compassion. Spare us, good Lord. From discouragement in the face of pain and disappointment, and from lack of persistence and thoroughness. Spare us, good Lord. From ignorance, apathy, and complacency, that prevent us from spreading the gospel. Spare us, good Lord. O oh God, we pray for the gifts of ministry. Inspire our minds with a vision of your kingdom in this time and place. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen with your love, Michael, our presiding bishop, all bishops, priests, deacons, and the whole people of God. Lord, hear our prayer. Sustain and encourage Bonnie, chosen bishop in your church, that she may lead us according to your will. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless the members of Bonnie's family and friends, that they may support her and engage their own ministries. Lord, hear our prayer. Touch our eyes, that we may see your glory in all creation. Lord, hear our prayer. Touch our ears, that we may hear from every mouth the hunger for hope and stories of refreshment. Lord, hear our prayer. Touch our lips, that we may tell in every tongue and dialect the wonderful works of God. Lord, hear our prayer. Touch our hearts, that we may discern the mission to which you call us. Lord, hear our prayer. Touch our feet, that we may take your good news in our neighborhoods, communities, and all parts of the world. Lord, hear our prayer. Touch our hands, that we may accomplish the work you give us to do. Lord, hear our prayer. Strengthen and encourage all who minister in your name in lonely, dangerous, and unresponsive places. Lord, hear our prayer. Open the hearts and hands of many to support your church in this and every place. Lord, hear our prayer. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Mary, the God-bearer, and all the saints, let us commend ourselves and all our life to Christ our God. To you, O Lord, our God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God of unchangeable power and eternal light, look favorably on your whole church, that wonderful and sacred mystery. By the effectual working of your providence, carry out in tranquility the plan of salvation. Let the whole world see and know that things which were cast down are being raised up, and things which had grown old are being made new, and that all things are being brought to their perfection by him through whom all things were made, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Micah. بما أتقدم إلى الرب وأنحني للإله العلي هل أتقدم بمحرقات 
بعجول أبناء سنة هل يصر الرب بألوف الكباش بربوات أنهار زيت قد أخبرك أيها الإنسان ما هو صالح وماذا يطلبه منك الرب إلا أن تصنع الحق وتحب الرحمة وتسلك متواضعا مع إلهك Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people Thanks be to God
reading from Philippians. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence and if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me and the God of peace will be with you. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. walking toward them on the sea. But when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, Command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased, and those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the one holy and living God. Amen. Enter the water and it accepts you, makes room for you, enfolds you, encompasses you, makes way for you, every single molecule of you. These wise and beautiful words define both paddling and holiness. <laughs> <laughs> They were spoken by a woman who has spent decades working and co-laboring with God and God's people to create a church that would do the same. Accept you, enfold you, make way for you, every molecule of you. And that you is everyone, no matter who you love, how you look, where you live, 
how you dress, how you dance, <laughs> everyone, every single molecule. I had known Bonnie Perry for some dozen years before the event that marked the moment that I really got to know her. It was the fall of 2011, and Bonnie had gathered a group of bishops and priests, theologians, and lay leaders for nearly a week of prayer and Bible study and story sharing in support of LGBTQ people with other Anglicans from around the global south in Durban, South Africa. It was the first gathering of the Chicago consultation on the African continent, and Bonnie had worked to convene with others this extraordinary gathering. But the moment I remember was just prior to the beginning of the meeting, where we were fortunate enough to have a couple of days visiting Cape Town and the surrounding area. It was while sitting next to Bonnie on a bus, riding along the coast of South Africa, that I gained a new understanding of the priest who was already a trusted colleague, friend, and mentor. So you got to picture it. As 20-foot waves crested and crashed along the shoreline, you could hear Bonnie's laughter, and we were at the front of the bus, you could hear Bonnie's laughter from one end of the long charter bus all the way to the back. Mm -hmm. And I have to tell you, I had never seen waves like these, and so I had, you know, I was a little bit frightened about that. But to Bonnie, it was pure joy. It was pure joy. As a child in a military family, she had too many addresses to number. But one of them was in Hawaii, where she would chase the sun on her boogie board. Mm -hmm. To Bonnie, the majestic and fierce waves touched something in her that was familiar and comforting and illustrative of God's power and the joy. The joy she felt as she gripped my arm, <laughs> saying, look, look at the waves, look at that wave, look, look. Did you see that one? Wow. Did you see that one? Wow. Over and over again. <laughs> that joy was palpable to everyone near her. The crash of the waves were loud, but they could not drown out the sound of Bonnie's joy. <laughs> People of the Diocese of Michigan, you have already learned that the woman who will soon be your bishop has loved the waters and the waterways of this diocese for a very long time. It's been a privilege to watch her fall in love with you, the people of this diocese, as you step out in faith into ministry together. And it just may be that loving the water and having a healthy respect for the primordial forces that power the waves is just what we need right now for a world that seems to be on fire. Mm -hmm. Now I've come to understand that waves form by wind moving across the surface of the water. The friction between the air molecules and the water molecules cause energy to be transferred from the wind to the water. This causes the waves to form. And so in scientific terms, a wave is simply a transfer of energy. Mm. Waves move mm. energy, not mm. water. And so when I hear about Jesus sending his disciples out in a boat to cross to the other side, to the other shore, and how it's beaten and battered by the waves, driving it further away from its destination, I can't help but think of energy transfer. Now, Jesus waits until morning to come across the water to save them. It's fascinating. He waits. <laughs> and, then, and then he walks on the water first before accepting Peter's dare, really, so that he can give Peter the ability to do the same. Now, of course, Peter takes his first steps and is just fine, just fine, until he notices the strong wind and becomes frightened and begins to sink. And he doesn't understand that the water will hold him and he has nothing to fear. 
Beloved, this is a word for the church today. Mm. The winds are strong, but Jesus is with us and we have nothing to fear. Mm. Jesus is with us as we make our way to the shores of hope, to the shores of love, to the shores of healing and reconciliation. It may feel like our church is in survival mode as we confront what some predict will be a death tsunami because it's hard and painful for us to see the numbers of people seeking traditional church experiences rapidly diminish. And it's not because we fear losing our beautiful buildings, or maybe a little. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's you. not because we lament that people don't find our liturgy and our traditional music spiritually satisfying, maybe a little bit. <laughs> and it's not because we fear the loss of status and privilege that being a Christian, and especially an Episcopalian, once held in this country. <laughs> mm. <laughs> no, no, we, we ache. Yeah. We ache about the decline mm. because deep down we know that the hope of the gospel is found in small and large communities of Christians faithful to breaking bread together, to studying scripture and the ways of Jesus and being renewed and sent out, sent out to bring more peace and more love and companionship and healing to the people in our midst. Mm. We don't want to lose that. Right. We want to make it to the shores of justice and peace and yeah. love that sets everybody free. Yeah. And it feels like we're so far from the shore. And the winds are strong and rough. And what it comes down to is this. Do we trust the water? Do we trust the baptismal waters of resurrection and new life in Jesus to hold us as we make our way to the shore? Saints, you and your new bishop are now called to make that journey together, to come to know and trust and love one another as you together paddle a new route to the shore. There will be storms and high winds and moments when getting to the other side might seem impossible. Mm. But you and your new bishop, you know something about new life and resurrection. You know something about new life and resurrection in churches and cities and people that were left for dead. You know something about resurrection yeah. and new life in those places. You know something about not being counted out. Yeah. You know something about staying steadfast steadfast for the long haul, mm. being faithful in season and out of season. And beloved, I don't have to remind you of what's at stake. Our country is being held hostage by fears based on the lies of white supremacy, mm. transphobia, mm. misogyny, Please. and a callous disregard will come after us. Mm. So there's an urgency, there's an urgency to this moment. Mm -hmm. And knowing how to organize and mobilize for the sake of the gospel is a matter of life and death for vulnerable children, for immigrants, refugees, the poor, and on and on. We know that we cannot continue much this, this way much longer, like we've got to find another way. Mm -hmm. And we know God promises to make all things new and that resurrection is real. So I must tell you that when times are bleak and when hope seems especially lost, listen carefully for when your new bishop tilts her head, gets a gleam in her eye, puts her finger to her lips, begins to jump up and down just a little, and asks, what if... <laughs> when that happens, watch out <laughs> and get ready 
because she will inspire you and lead you to a journey that will change you and move your boat just a little, mostly black and brown south side of Chicago were dying at catastrophic rates because of gun violence, with nary a yawn from the wealthier and wider north side of Chicago. Your new bishop will on the streets of downtown at rush hour to march for an end to gun violence. Mm. When, <laughs> when marriage equality seemed like an impossible dream, Bonnie was on the forefront of the movement to change laws, canons, and hearts for the full inclusion of L. <laughs> for all of her community organizing and congregational development chops, because they are significant. For all of that, what you'll discover about Bonnie, if you haven't already, is that this work is deeply faithful. She, she inspires others to grab a paddle and get in the boat and join in. And she does it not with fancy innovations, but with the core practices of our faith. Bonnie would be the first to admit that actually saying your prayers, being marinated in scripture, really believing the good news of Jesus, and taking the time, preferably over a steaming cup of tea, to get to really know each other is how things get done. She knows that this is the water that holds and has held the body of Christ since forever, and we have nothing to fear. Your new bishop is the real deal. She knows that the world wants us to be afraid, afraid of stretching out beyond our comfort zones. But like Peter, we've got to try. We might blow it, but we have to try. We have to try and trust that God, God will help us to become who God wants us to be. God will get us there. God will get us to that shore. And naysayers will tell us that reaching out to the other, trying to get to that shore, is not worth the risk. It's not worth the risk of relationships, that giving up power and privilege and position in order to serve and lead like Jesus is foolish. That we don't have enough time, that we don't have enough money, that we don't have enough people resources, enough faith to work for the reign of God. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. And, and when the waves are really high, and the waters are especially choppy, and our boats are being rocked to and fro, this is not the time for faith to falter. This is not the time to give up. This is the time to shore up our strength with the stories of perseverance and endurance, and to trust the mission given to us and to trust one another. The lives and ministries of this diocese are built upon the work of justice and inclusion, faithfully done by stalwarts of generations. Think about people like Bonnie Anderson, and Bishop Stu Wood, Bishop Rendell Gibbs, and so many others, many of you right here, who have been holding steady while moving this diocese in the direction of God's dream the dream that all would not only survive, but would thrive and flourish, all of us. So as you embark on the journey ahead, as the crozier is passed from the first black bishop of this diocese to the first woman, in this moment of energy transfer, understand what a sign of hope and possibility you are, what you represent for the whole church. Let nothing drown out this joy. May the waters that shape, define, and influence the Diocese of Michigan hold you, encompass you, make way for you, bless you, every molecule of you, as you journey to the shore. Amen. Amen. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs>
Oh, man. Oh. <laughs> As I went down in the river to pray, studying about that good old way, and who shall wear the starry crown? Good Lord, show me the way. Oh, sisters, let's go down. Let's go down, come on down. Oh, sisters, let's go down, down in the river to pray. As I My sister, the people have chosen you and have affirmed their trust in you by acclaiming your election. A bishop in God's holy church is called to be one with the apostles in proclaiming Christ's resurrection and interpreting the gospel and to testify to Christ's sovereignty as Lord of Lords and King of Kings. You are called to guard the faith unity and discipline of the church, the church throughout the world. Your heritage is the faith of patriarchs, prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Your joy will be to follow him who came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for many. My sister, are you persuaded that God has called you to the office of bishop? I am so persuaded. 
Will you accept this call and fulfill this trust in obedience to Christ? I will obey Christ and I will serve in his name. Will you be faithful in prayer and in the study of Holy Scripture that you may have the mind of Christ? I will, for he is my help. Will you boldly proclaim and interpret the gospel of Christ, enlightening the minds and stirring up the conscience of your people? I will, in the power of the Spirit. As a chief priest and pastor, will you encourage and support all baptized people in their gifts and ministries? Nourish them from the riches of God's grace. Pray for them without ceasing and celebrate with them the sacraments of our redemption. I will in the name of Christ, the shepherd and the bishop of our souls. Will you guard the faith, unity and discipline of the church? I will for the love of God. Will you share with your fellow bishops in the government of the whole church? Will you sustain your fellow presbyters and take counsel with them? Will you guide and strengthen the deacons and all others who minister in the church? I will by the grace given me. Will you be merciful to all? Show compassion to the poor and strangers, and defend those who have no helper. I will, for the sake of Christ Jesus. Bonnie, through these promises, thank you, Bonnie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Through these promises, you have committed yourself to God to serve his church in the office of bishop. We therefore call upon you, chosen to be a guardian of the church's faith, to now lead us in confessing that faith. Thank you. We believe in one God. We believe, we believe in, in one God, God the, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death from the Bessary. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into the heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, she is worshiped and glorified. She has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Thank you very much. You okay? No, I'm okay. No, you're right. Okay.
God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of all comfort, dwelling on high but having regard for the lowly, knowing all things before they come to pass, we give you thanks that from the beginning you have gathered and prepared a people to be heirs of the covenant of Abraham and have raised up prophets, kings, and priests, never leaving your temple untended. We praise you also that from the creation you have graciously accepted the ministry of those whom you have chosen. Therefore, Father, make Bonnie a bishop in your church, pour out upon her the power of your princely spirit, whom you bestowed upon your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, with whom he endowed the apostles, and by whom your church is built up in every place, to the glory and unceasing praise of your name. To you, O oh Father, all hearts are open. We pray that the heart of this your servant, whom you have chosen to be a bishop in your church, will be open with such love of you and of all the people, that she may feed and tend the flock of Christ and exercise without reproach the high priesthood to which you have called her, serving before you day and night in the ministry of reconciliation, declaring pardon in your name, offering the holy gifts, and wisely overseeing the life and work of the church. In all things, may she present before you the acceptable offering of a pure and gentle and holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and power and glory in the church now and forever. Amen. Amen.
I give into your hands this pastoral staff. receive the Holy Scriptures. Feed the flock of Christ committed to your charge. Guard and defend them in his truth. And be a faithful steward of God's holy word and sacraments. Come on, Susan. Come on over here. Come over here. Now, Michigan, greet your new baby. Peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh my Lord in heaven. Look at you. Hey, Beth Taylor. I know. Peace be with all of you, and please be seated. And to ordain and consecrate a bishop. And now we proceed to share our meal, our sacred meal, our communion meal. A few instructions. Those in the front section of the theater, at the invitation of an usher, two rows at a time, will stand and follow the direction of your Eucharistic minister and your usher on the ends of your rows. Those in the handicapped sections, please stay in place and Eucharistic ministers will come to you. Choir, you know what to do. Those in our overflow seating area in the ballroom, Bishop Perry, Bishop Perry. <laughs> and other Eucharistic ministers will come to you. Everyone else in the house, 
I want you to picture an imaginary line straight up the middle of our space. Those of you in house left are in odd number seats. Those of you who are in house right are in even number seats. At the direction of an usher, please stand one row at a time and follow your usher this side exiting the theater this way and this side exiting the theater this way. The usher will then direct you back to your seats. The key to all of this <laughs> is trust. <laughs> Follow your usher <laughs> and receive the bread and the wine that is made holy. Our bread is gluten free. Thank you, St. John's Royal Oak. And now our new bishop, the Right Reverend Bonnie Perry, has a word of welcome. What could possibly go wrong? <laughs> Thank you very, very much. And there are an inordinate number of people who did an amazing amount of work to make our celebration come to be. And I am so very, very grateful for them. Um, some of you know my brother has been in intensive care. He's out of intensive care. Um, I promised I'd do a shout out to him. Kevin, I hope you're still watching. <laughs> We've got, it's one of a wonderful thing when we're able to have our presiding bishop with us. And so I am delighted that Michael Curry is here and he would like to say a word. Thank you, Bishop. <laughs> it is a joy and a privilege on behalf of all of the bishops here gathered and the bishops throughout the church to express not only joy and thanksgiving to Almighty God, but just sheer energy from your brothers, sisters, and siblings who are the Episcopal Church wherever they may be, and some of them are watching us, and we pray God's blessing on you in Michigan. We need you to lead the way. <laughs> Additionally, I do want to say a word about the offering, that the collection that will be coming, and remember the preacher talked about transfers of energy. And, and, and this is not going to be complicated, so if you didn't understand communion, don't worry. I got another way for you to do it. <laughs> the, the offering today will be um, um, shared among a number of ministries that you have here of social service ministries that really do serve the cause of God's love and compassion and justice in our world and in the communities here. So I do invite you to be as generous as you can. The uh, funds raised will be shared equally among a variety of the ministries that are sponsored by congregations in this diocese. And I just ask you to be as generous, just as generous as you can be. And let me help you out with that. Many of you know George Washington was the first president. And he was an Episcopalian. And, and, and we love our first president and brother Episcopalian. But there are many other worthies. <laughs> lesser known, but of greater denominational value. <laughs> Bring them to church also. God bless you. <laughs> excited to have with us today both the present president of the House of Deputies and the past president of the House of Deputies, Gay Jennings and Bonnie Anderson. I'm, you are so formative in this place and in, in my ministry. Thank you very, very, very much.
Please know that wherever you may find yourself in your journey of faith, know that all are always welcome at our table, at God's table. And now let us with gladness present the alms and the oblations of our life and our labor unto the Lord.
Lord be with you. Thank you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God, and God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets, and their courses in this fragile earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have there be. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the stewards of creation, but we turned against you, betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in you. And again and again, you called us to return through prophets and sages. You revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time, you sent your only son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us and peace. And by his blood, he has reconciled us. And by his wounds, we are here. And therefore, we praise you, joining with heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory and their unending hymn. So, Father, we who have been redeemed by him and made a new people by water and the Spirit, now bring before you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And on the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. He said the blessing. He broke the bread and he gave it to his friends and he said, take Eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them. And he said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. And remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you the sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our forebears, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Leah, and Rachel, God, and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us. Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. And let the grace of this holy communion Make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. 
and accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great high priest, to whom and with you and the Holy Spirit, your church gives honor and glory and worship from generation to generation. Amen. And as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And these are the gifts of God, and we are the people of God. Okay, now I have, I have no idea what to do now. <laughs> they heard me say, I have no idea what to do now. <laughs> Okay. All right. Well, let's go. That way. Where's Bonnie? I'm with Bonnie Anderson. <laughs> Bonnie? Am I with you?
will bless the Lord at all times. God's grace shall always be on my lips. My soul has glory in.
Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Bonnie may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we, with her, may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our help is in the name of the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth forevermore. Dear friends, life is short and we do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who journey the way with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. And the blessing of God, creator, Christ and Holy Holy Spirit be with you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.